Hi, I'm Nico. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, Delta 400, which is uh, a 400 ISO black and white film by Ilford. You can stay here, buddy, but you have to shut up, all right? As you can see, this is almost empty. I have two rolls left, which means I am eight rolls into my first brick. A brick is what us uh, old school professional cool photographers call a 10 pack. So eight rolls in, I feel like I'm starting to have a good idea of what this film looks like, what it feels like, what it can and cannot do, what it's good at, what it's bad at. So I felt like it was, at this point I can put out a review because my mind is pretty much made up about this film. Uh, the big caveat is that uh, while I'm happy to share this with you guys, uh, I made this review and this test for myself. I wasn't trying to make an exhaustive and universal test, I was trying to see what this film would look like for my use. Uh, for example, I only use one developer here at home, it's Rodinal, so I only tested this film in Rodinal. It may be that it looks much better in D76, HG110 or any developer that you can name, doesn't matter to me, because I only want to stock one developer at home and I landed on Rodinal a long time ago. So with that being said, I wanted to test a, a 400 ISO film because uh, I only use HP4, which I absolutely love. HP4 uh, exposed method at 64 to 80 ISO and processed in Rodinal. For me, is it's my happy place. It's where I always love the images that come out of this combo. Uh, I, bought, I buy this film by the hundreds of rolls and it's all I shoot year round. But 80 ISO at best is limiting and that's why I'm looking for a 400 ISO option. I will accept ISO 320 because that's two stops faster than 80, but uh, I don't want anything slower than that. At this point, I'd rather just push V4 if I have to. So within the available uh, options for 400 ISO films, um, I thought I would try Delta 400 first. Um, because it's uh, it's Ilford film, like I said, I love FP4, so I have a big brand loyalty to Ilford. And for personal reasons, if I have a choice between a European or post-Brexit UK brand and an American brand, which starts with a K, I usually prefer to support a European brand, because here in Europe we don't put children in cages. Uh, so Delta 400, um, let's start at the first roll. This was the first picture I ever made with that film. And this shoot was probably the reason I bought that uh, 10 pack of uh, Delta 400 to begin with. I had this shot planned and I knew it would uh, necessitate a mix of uh, continuous light and flash. And uh, I knew that FP4 would not cut it for the light levels that my continuous lights produce. Uh, of course, I completely screwed up the exposure. Uh, I was at least two stops underexposed and I don't think the times I got for developing that first roll were very accurate either. So I had to push this image in digital post a lot. Uh, even then you can see that it's all right. It still has some grays. Uh, it's not uh, only blacks and whites. Uh, you can see that the green is heinous. But again, it's something I had to really, really push that image in post. This was my first contact with the film, uh, but I had nine rolls left in my pack, so I did not give up on it quite yet. The next shot I did was uh, this one. Again, this is a studio situation under artificial light, which is what I do most of the time. Uh, you can see that the tones are really nice. It has a nice presence to the picture. I really like the way the skin tones are rendered and the, the white of the shirt is preserved fairly well. Um, Compared to something shot with my sweetheart, FP4, uh, you can see that we're in um, rather neighboring tones and we're in the same ballpark. But if we look uh, closely into the details, this is a 3200 dpi scan, so that would print uh, roughly 60 by 60 at 300 dpi, I'm talking in centimeters of course. And uh, compared to the FP4, Scan, you can see that the grain is in a completely differently. Uh, so I wasn't impressed by the grain of this film at all. Uh, I had read that it can be close to um, FP4, and from this second roll, it sadly really wasn't. 
a couple of days later, I shot more images for that same project. That's why the images look so similar. And this time I decided to switch my um, uh, concentration of developer to one plus a hundred and develop in semi stand. Uh, I know from experience with um, FP4 that uh, Rodino uh, is a Jekyll and Hyde developer. And if you agitate it too much, you can get really an explosion of grain, which I think is what happened with that first, uh, with that roll. So the next shirt, I didn't want to go too different because the images would have to end up in the same portfolio, but I still tried to agitate it for much less. Uh, looking at a 100% crop, uh, I, we can see that it's not a big difference. Um, it's a bit better, but it's still a very grainy image again compared to FP4. It's a world of difference. Uh, next, I went to town with this film. There was a, a very nice uh, snowy day in Oslo, lots of snow falling. I knew I would have the streets to myself. So I decided to just go out and try to record the the event. I know that this is supposed to be a very dry video, a very technical look at a film, but I thought I would still try to give you some insight into how I make photographs and uh, give you some tips that you might find useful in the field. So let's have a look at, at how I built this next photo. Uh, I found this statue of this uh, Icarus figure which is getting covered by snow, so obviously it's a beautiful motif this dark metal with the white snow accumulating on it. Problem is the background is very busy. So now you can see how I'm walking around the statue and trying to find a way to hide that strange boat stop totem without making that uh, flag pole appear on the right side. I'm trying different options, now composing it with the, the clock in the background on the left side of the statue. I uh, don't think I'm gonna do that. Now you can see that I'm stepping back trying to maybe change the relative chain size of different things in the frame but i'm moving forward again because i think the best perspective was to be up close and now you can see that i got it i have found a way to hide this uh, totem in the back and have the clock tower be a nice part of the frame so i'm locking this composition I'm focusing, I have my light measure, I've had it for an hour because the light doesn't change on that day. And now I'm looking at these people who are walking in the back of my frame. And what am I looking at specifically? The dog. I need to get the dog in a nice photogenic position with all four limbs, readable and his head and tail high. It's a beautiful dog. That's the picture. And now what I've done, is that the top half of my picture tells a story. There's a bird, there's an Icarus statue, it's a, and there's a white sky. It's a story about flight, a bird that can fly and, and a very heavy statue that will never take off. And the bottom half of my frame tells a different story. It's a story about a dog and a big bull. It's kind of funny. So here I was able to hold two narratives in one photograph because I let go of everything else. I fixed my focus, I fixed my exposure, I fixed my composition. And all I had to do was con was concentrate on this small element, the dog. And because I got the dog right, the story works. Next, uh, that was uh, the next role, role number five or six at this point. And uh, I had landed on the process of really um, semi stand developing the film, which means I dilute my Rodino really, really much, maybe a one to a hundred. And then I just let the film stand in it and agitate as little as possible. Uh, I found that this is the way to get uh, the lowest amount of grain. And it doesn't really change much to the contrast. It can make the highlights a bit more flat, but uh, I have no complaints in that department. So if I had to make Delta 400 my film of choice, I would probably semi-stand develop it at one to 100 most of the time. Here you can see that the green is very reasonable and you can see that uh, all those dark tones are really, really well resolved and separated. It's a film that loves dark tones and if I have to photograph some low-key images like uh, a dark-skinned subject wearing dark clothes against a dark background, 
I would definitely uh, grab some Delta 400 for this kind of scene because it has so much separation in those dark areas. And this is the next roll again. And um, here it's getting interesting because at this point I had started to shoot T-Max 400 uh, in parallel with Delta 400. I was carrying two rolls in my Hasselblad. So I could shoot the same scenes with both films. And unfortunately for Delta 400, the comparison on that image, it's gonna be brutal. Are you ready? You can see the separation in the middle of the frame. On the left side is Delta 400 and on the right side is Kodak T-Max 400. And you can see that the grain is completely different. Uh, the film on the left looks, at, looks like it's so much grainier than the one on the right. Uh, Kodak T-Max 400, I don't know how they do it. It also uh, develops much faster, almost twice as fast. So I don't know how they did that really. It's more sensitive to the developer. It's a more efficient grain and it's so much smaller. Uh, if you follow the, the central line of this uh, diving board, you can see that the wood grain and the fine detail is so much more readable on the right side of the image than the left side. So for me, this was unfortunately pretty much the death of Delta 400. Because uh, shooting that role in parallel with T-Max 400 has shown me that T-Max does everything that Delta 400 does. It has that same affinity for dark tones, but it's so much better in terms of grain. And for me, that's a very important factor. Again, you might not be as obsessed with grain as I am, and you might prefer Delta 400, which actually looks more film, looks more analog. Or you might be using a different developer and you will find completely different results. It might be that Delta 400 just doesn't play well with Rodinal, and T-Max 400 does. Here are more images where I was really happy with Delta 400. Uh, I love like how it has resolved every subtle gray in that image. Uh, nothing is lost. The highlights in the street, which was uh, way brighter than the foreground and the place where I'm standing, which is under uh, a bridge so the the building is uh, hiding me from the sky and the light here is another one from this roll that i shot uh, in parallel with the delta and t max and you can see that uh, while the the tones and the values are about the same the delta 400 image on the left has retained much more shadows you can see it in the sweater when you go from the left side to the right side, the sweater has much more detail and much more volume and gradient than with the T-Max image. So T-Max is nati natively a bit more contrasty and it doesn't have that same affinity that Delta has for uh, low lights and dark tones, at least not as much. Now let's talk about uh, reciprocity failure. And this is my gift to you because uh, this is never a factor in my photography. I am not a Michael Kenna wannabe. I don't walk around with my Hasselblad trying to do very long exposure landscapes, but some of you might. So here, enjoy. This is the mathematic formula as uh, given by Ilford. So it's your measure time at the power of 1.41 that gives you the correct time. Here are some examples. So uh, four seconds at the power of 141 gives seven seconds. Six seconds in the middle at the power of 141 gives 12 seconds. And 10 seconds at the power of 141 gives 25 seconds. I don't have a scientific calculator with me or even on my phone when I'm around. So what I do or what I would do if I was into reciprocity and long exposures is use this fantastic app called Reciprocity. I don't remember what it's called, but I put it on the screen. Uh, you can see you just uh, entered the name of the film and how long your exposure is, and you leave everything else on zero, and boom, on the bottom, it gives you the correct exposure. There's even a start button, because this app can also be a countdown. You can use it while you're holding your remote or whatever, and you can do the bulb while syncing with your phone. That's one way to use it. Another way to use it, if you have um, a neutral density filter, is that you can uh, enter your measured time from your light meter. And then in the menu, you can add a filter. And now with an ND6 filter, 
you can see that the app is uh, automatically telling me that I need to be exposing for four seconds out of the 15th of a second measure time. So it's fantastic. No math, no calculation. How many stops is that filter again? You just go in the menu, enter the filter you're using, and the app just tells you what your new exposure is. I really recommend this app. Uh, all of that stuff is on the free version of the app. You don't need the, the premium version to use any of that, which is amazing. I have bought uh, the paying app, I think it was 10 euros, not for the extra functions, but just to thank the developing team that made this great app. I like to support people who do good work. So this is my uh, reciprocity failure image with a Delta 400. I think it was a uh, 15 seconds, but that's the app telling me that. So I had no idea what the original um, time would have been without a reciprocity failure. You can see that the, the water has a nice mirror surface, but uh, here I think the green is working against us. I think that green looks uh, fantastic for things like uh, skin and sand, things that have texture, but in sky and water, I don't like grain because I want to see those things as smooth as possible. I think that was it for uh, Delta 400. Um, I have two rolls left and I will shoot these uh, probably for walk around photography or maybe still life, but not for portraits because it's a bit too grainy. And I will probably be uh, picking uh, Kodak T-Max 400 as my 400 ISO film of choice. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was useful for you guys and I will talk to you some other time. Bye-bye. Okay, today Astrid is working from home. So to test Delta 400 in a reportage situation, we're gonna make a reportage on Astrid. She can't know about it. She can't collaborate because it's, it's true old fashioned reportage. She'll be back soon.